And I want you to turn with me tonight, if you have a Bible with you, we're turning to the Old Testament, and we're turning to the book of Judges, please. The book of Judges, and we're in chapter 19 this evening. The book of Judges, chapter 19. As you're finding the place, I want just to uh, enlighten to you where you are this evening. As far as our scripture reading tonight is, we have a man who's a Levite, and he's on his way to the house of the Lord. But he turns into a city and on his way there called Gibeah. And we come down to verse 16 of Judges 19. And it says, And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even. Now notice the time of day. It's even. It's evening. Which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. And there is no man that receiveth me to house. And we know that the Lord will bless the reading of his own precious truth. Here we have a man tonight on a journey. He comes to a certain place. And there when he comes to the certain place tonight, he finds nobody that will bring him in. He finds nobody to take him in. He finds nobody to welcome him. You know, my dear friend, this evening we're all on a journey. We're all on a journey, and every journey that we take tonight is for the one purpose, and that's to reach a certain destiny. My friend, tonight here's the question. Have you considered tonight where you're going? Have you considered your where you're going, where you're going? This man this evening was sitting in the city street. Nobody would have him. Nobody would invite him in. And my dear friend, this evening, as you read throughout the rest of 19, of Judges chapter 19, you'll find the street where he was sitting was a very wicked and a very sinful city. But you know, friend, that's the way the world leaves us tonight. The world will never welcome us in. Friend, the world will tell you that it loves you. And the world will have its pleasures. But when it comes to the very time when you really need the world, you'll find the world will close its doors. And my friend, this evening as this man sits in the street of Gibeah, it's evening time. As he sits in the street tonight, the sun is setting in the, beneath the western sky. The day is coming to a close. And this man is still outside. And as he sits in the street, and as the day comes to a close, there's an old man that comes to him. An old man tonight, and he comes to him, and this is the question, and this is the text. He asks the question, Whither goest thou? My dear unsaved friend tonight, that's my text for you this evening. Whither goest thou? And you need to ask yourself the question, where am I going tonight in the light of eternity? Because my dear unsaved friend tonight, that's a question you need to answer and you need to make sure you answer it well this evening. Whither goest thou? I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. I remember one night I was only saved a very short time. 1985 it was. And I was coming home uh, from the local faith mission prayer, prayer meeting. And the wee faith mission pilgrim, she was telling us how you should be always ready to give, to give a, 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 a good testimony and a reason to everybody who you meet why you're saved and where you're going. 
And I was on my way home from that prayer meeting one night, and the next thing I got the red light, this was in the height of the Troubles now, 1985, and I came from a county to own village called Ochnacloy. Hands up if you've ever told of Ochnacloy. Hands up now. Hands up if you've ever in it. Oh, there's people with sense yet, there is indeed. Well, that's where I came from. I came from the wee county to own village of Ochnacloy, and we were bothered on the border along with County Monaghan. But I remember coming home from that uh, that prayer meeting that night, boys, I was always G'd up. The first person I'm going to meet, I ain't going to tell them about, about Christ and about how I'm saved, no. Well, got the red light. Do you, you remember the red light? You pulled down, you, you pulled down the, and you wound down the window. And then that night, it wasn't the local UDR, if I remembered them, or the police. It was the British Army. And they had all the camouflage and all, all over their faces. And they had the rifle, like us here, and he put his head through the window, he says, you got your driving license on you there, mate? <laughs> it wasn't bad, Heidi, sure it wasn't. <laughs> he says, have you got your driving license on you there, mate? And I, I used to keep my license above the, uh, above the sun visor. Now you got the, the license out. And I, I had a wee sticker in my license for the job. And it's, you, remember, you remember, maybe, maybe you remember this wee sticker. It had a wee smiley face on it and it said, smile, Jesus loves you. And I handed it to the British Army man and... Uh, and I was, I says, now Lord, how can I witness this man here? And uh, the next thing, he, he, he took my relations away and he, he walked around the car like this. He must have thought I was a chancy boy. Couldn't blame him. And he walked around, he walked around the car and he come back and he says to me, he says, uh, uh, where are you going, mate? And I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> he says, uh, Say it again, mate. Where are you going? He says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to heaven. And then he says to me, I'm sorry, I'm not knowing I'm holding a rifle here, just in case someone, <laughs> just in case you think there's something wrong with my arms here, but there's not. He says, uh, can you step out of the car, could you? He says, okay. And before long, he had my two hands on the, on the roof. But then there was another soldier who I had met about a fortnight ago. He's a Christian fella. And he came down and he says, well, what's, it, what's wrong here? What's wrong here? And you know, what the, you know what the soldier who stopped me said? Boys, I didn't like it. He says, Paddy's trying to be funny here. I says, Paddy? <laughs> he says, my name's George. <laughs> but do you know what the British, but, but the fellow who I met a fortnight ago was a Christian soldier. He was a Christian. And he stopped me one time before, about a fortnight before this, and he saw my wee sticker. He says, I love your sticker, mate. I love your sticker. He says, do you? He says, are you saved yourself? He says, I am. He says, where were you saved? He says, at a Billy Graham crusade. He says, boys, that's powerful. Do you know what he done? He opened up his flak jacket. Remember the old flak jackets they used to wear? Opened the flak jacket, and this is what it said inside. The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man can do unto me. And he set his rifle down that Sunday afternoon, and he took off his helmet, and you know what it said on his helmet? You know what he had wrote in his helmet? What he had wrote was these words, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Boys, I was never as glad as that. I was never as glad of seeing that wee soldier that night. But listen to me. I was right. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Tell me something, I don't see a friend. This is the question. Whither goest thou? Two ways I answer that question right first of all. My dear friend, I want to ask, challenge you with this question. Whither goest thou? Tell me this, is it heaven? Or is it hell? Is it heaven tonight, my dear own safe friend? Or is it hell? Because there's no other place beyond death. Is it heaven, love? Or is it hell? Because God's asking your heart and your soul the question tonight, whether goest thou? Do you know what Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says? It's appointed unto men once to die. But after this is the judgment. My friend, you don't die like a dog, sir. You don't die like an animal, love. Once death comes, you're out into eternity. And God wants to challenge you tonight. Destination, eternity. Whither goest thou? My dear unsafe friend, 
Whither goest thou tonight? If this was your last night on earth, love, and mind you, it could be, whither goest thou in the light of eternity? Let me tell you of heaven first of all. Do you know tonight that heaven is the land of the no mores? Did you know that? It's the land of the no mores. Revelation 21 verse 4 says, Now there will be no death nor sorrow. Thank God there will be no wakes or funerals in heaven. Thank God tonight there will be no graves in glory. It's the place of no death or crying. Tears will never stain the streets of glory. No crying or no pain in heaven either. My former pastor, the late Ivan Thompson, some of you may remember Ivan. Ivan said, if he brought a magnet to some of the meetings, he says, and he waved the magnet, he says, half the congregation will be up on the pulpit with him because everybody's held together with bits of metal now it is. But he says, you know, up in heaven, there'll be no hard valves, there'll be no hip joints, hearing aids, walking sticks, because the former things will have passed away. I want to let you unsafe people know tonight, heaven's a real place. Do you know what makes heaven precious? It's not because there'll be no more death, nor crying, nor no more sorrow, nor pain. What makes heaven precious tonight is because Christ our Savior will be there. Whether goest thou tonight? You see, friend, this evening, the reason why I ask you that question tonight is this, because many people believe they're going to heaven when they're not. I believe there are many people in the kingdom of mourn tonight who believe they're going to heaven, but they're not going. You see, the Bible tells us, friend, this evening, the Bible makes it clear that there's a way which it seems right unto a man. It seemeth right. Oh, I'm going to heaven, pastor. Shall I go to my church every Sunday? Does that get you to heaven? I'm going to heaven, Pastor, because I was at the communion table this morning. I'm going to heaven. Does that, make, does, that, does that get you to heaven? I'm going to heaven, Pastor, because I'm this and I'm that and the other thing. Do you know the first person goes to heaven? It's the people who knows that they're sinners. My dear unsaved friend this evening, listen to me. You weren't born into this world as a Christian. You were born into this world as a sinner. People say, I'm Presbyterian, I'm Baptist, I'm Free Presbyterian, I'm Pentecostal, I'm Catholic, I'm Methodist. Methodist. Let me tell you, you know the Bible says you are? You're a sinner. And my friend, that means we're all, we're all lost. You weren't born into this, into, this, into this world as a Protestant. And you weren't born into this world as a Catholic. You were born into this world as a sinner tonight. A sinner that's perishing. But thank God tonight there's many in this congregation and these folk that's getting baptized tonight. They're going to heaven. And they're going to heaven. Why? Because they've been to Christ. And because there was a day in their life when they realized that they were sinners and that they came to the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of sinners, and there they put their faith and trust in Him. No man goes to heaven if he has never been to the cross. And I want to take a wee moment and bring you tonight to Calvary's cross because I can tell you tonight, it's there where God proves to you that God loves you. And I want you to see him tonight with arms outstretched, the blessed Savior, and see him nail to an old rugged cross, and see tonight the Son of God that loved you and gave himself for you there. Because my friend, that's where heaven begins. It begins at the foot of the old rugged cross when you come as a sinner to Jesus. And our sister tonight has sung about grace and she has sung about his, his precious blood. And listen tonight, my dear unsaved friend, in this meeting, your church cannot save you. And this church cannot save you. 
You could go to church from now to the cows come home and still be in hell because heaven doesn't begin at a church. Heaven begins at the cross. Every person that's on the road to heaven tonight, there was a day, there was that moment, my dear unsafe friend, when they bowed in repentance of sin and trusted Christ as their Savior. I'll tell you, that's when heaven begins. Whither goest thou tonight? Is it heaven? No man goes to heaven, no woman goes to heaven, no no young person goes to heaven unless their sins have been forgiven. And my dear friend, tonight I want to bring you now to a person who can forgive sins. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight he's the Savior of sinners, and tonight if you bypass him, you'll never be in heaven. Because on that old rugged blood-stained cross so long ago, there the Son of God was crucified by the hands and by the feet. And my friend, there he was, hanging on the cross that day, taking your guilty place and my guilty place. And remember, unsafe friend, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes are we healed. Let me tell you tonight, there's no other way into heaven, love. The Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. John 10 and 9, he says, I am the door by me. If any man enters in, boys, I love that bit, any man. That means the worst of sinners, the worst of sinners you can get your hands on. Thank God it's for the whosoever will. Heaven's door is open for you tonight, sinner friend. It's still open, and he's still calling. And he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Do you know what he said? I am come that they might have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Do you know there's a lot of people about tonight, and their lives are so empty? Their lives are so meaningless? Why is it in today's society that everybody has supposed to have everything, and they've absolutely nothing, why is it that this generation sees more suicides than any other? That's a big one, isn't it? Why is it that this generation sees more, sees more suicides than any other generation? A generation today when we're wanting for nothing. Do you want to know why that is? Because nothing that this world gives satisfies. And my friend, tonight the real problem with you tonight is sin. And friend, tonight all I can do is to bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of sinners, and you must come tonight. He's the only one that can forgive. He's the only one that can cleanse. He's the only one that can give you eternal life tonight. He's the only one that can give you salvation. Listen to me. Answer the question, whither goest thou? Is it heaven? That land that is fairer than day, the land of the no mores? Or, or tonight, is it hell? Oh, nobody likes that word. Nobody likes that place. But my friend, tonight Jesus spoke more of hell than he did of heaven. In Luke chapter 16, we read of a man there who lived life just the way you live it. He breathed the same air that you breathed. He had everything that this life, he had everything that this life could afford him. But you know what happened to that man one day? The very same thing that will happen to you one day, his time to die came. I want to make it clear tonight before I go any further. Listen to me. Your time to die will come. And it may come sooner rather than later. And it doesn't take much today. And it doesn't take long today. And you need to ask yourself a question. Where go I in the light 
of eternity. I want you to know tonight that beyond that beyond this life tonight, there's the great eternity. And my friend, that's where sin will take you. Sin will take you to the everlasting fires of hell. You may say to me, but George, I don't drink and I don't smoke and I haven't killed anybody. I know that. But sin still occupies the heart. And sin will be the means of bringing your immortal soul to the fires of hell. Do you know something tonight? The easiest thing for any person can do? The easiest thing that a person can do is to lose their soul. The only thing you have to do, my dear unsafe friend, to be lost in hell, do you know what the only thing you have to do? Is to do absolutely nothing. Just sit tight the way you are. And my friend, you'll be in hell. But tonight I plead with you. I plead tonight that you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight like the ones who are being baptized tonight, that you'll come like them and trust in the blessed Savior who alone can save your immortal soul. Listen to me. He's in this church tonight. And he's speaking to you tonight. And perhaps he's challenging you tonight. And you know it. You know it. And tonight you're sitting troubled. And tonight you're wondering, why am I here? You're here because God has brought you here. And my friend, this evening, whether goest thou, because this is what the Lord Jesus said, Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. My friend, you look at the way gate tonight, you'll have drunkards, you'll have murderers, you'll have all the sinners on it, and unsafe friend, you're going through the gate. You're on the broad road. And then he goes on to say, but, be, but straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. But there be few that find that there's only a few. And friend, tonight, if you don't find the Christ of Calvary's cross, you're going through the way gate tonight. You're going to hell. I ask you the question. 100 years from now, not one of us will be here. 100 years from now, not one of us will be here. 100 years from now, where will you be? Where will you be? You'll be somewhere. Heaven or hell. A few weeks ago, Almost a month ago, now I got a phone call from a, a man called Godfrey, a man who I knew well. He says, George, will you come out and pray with me? He says, I will. He was dying with cancer. And when I walked into his sitting room, I just knew poor Godfrey hadn't long to go. And remember, in the course of our conversation, Godfrey began to cry. Thank God Godfrey got saved. But this day he began to cry. I took him by the hand at something I never thought I would ever see, Godfrey crying. I says, Godfrey, what can I do? He says, what about Dino, he says. He says, who? He says, what about Dino? Dino Craney was another plumber who died about eight months ago. He says, hey, poor Dino, he says. Poor Dino, where is he today? Man had no time for God. He had no time for the gospel. Where is he today? And he began to cry, friends. It's a healthy thing to weep for souls. So say Dino's in heaven, Godfrey. 
what he says. He couldn't be. He says, Dino's in heaven. Because shortly before he saved, he, before he, shortly before he died, the local free Presbyterian minister led him to the Lord. And this is what Dino, this is what Godfrey then said. He said, you see, when it comes to this, you need to know where you're going. Unsafe a friend tonight, listen to me. You need to know where you're going tonight. You need to know. And you need to make your mind up as to where you are going. But I plead with you tonight. Trust the Savior. Make him yours. I'm telling you, friend, the Christian life's not a life of bondage. If it was, I wouldn't be here. It's a life of blessing. It's a life of blessing. Listen, friends, I was in the world. Some of you people down there mightn't think that. I was in the world. I discoed and danced and all the rest of it. And I say this all to my shame. Smoked and drank and discoed the whole lot. Used to play in blood and thunder bands, the whole the band and the whole lot. Listen to me. None of my past life would compare to what I have now. Nothing. And you want to know something? This life could be yours. It can be yours if you come to the Lord Jesus. You may be here tonight and saying, George, how do I come? Boys, that message spoke to me. How do I come? I need to get ready. I need to be prepared to meet God. How do I come? Do you know how you come? You come just the way you are. It's the way I came that night. I just came just the way I was. And asked the Lord Jesus into my heart and friend he came in and not only did he save me, but he changed me. And I'm telling you, he gives you a, worth, worth, a life worth living. You want to know something? He's the best friend I have in life. And I'll tell you this, he'll be the best friend I have in death. And I plead with you unsafe people tonight, will you not come to the Savior and trust him and come to him tonight as he calls you? Whether, whether goest thou, is it heaven or is it hell? Come to Christ tonight. His arms are still outstretched. And he says, Him that cometh to me, I will in no ways cast out. Friend, whether goest thou, is it heaven or is it hell? Your choice. Your choice. Let's take a wee moment now and bow in prayer, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And I want God's people to pray. And pray like you never prayed before. Now, friend, that was a simple question, but it was a very solemn one. You need to know where you're going. If this was the day you were to die, friend, you could take a heart attack. You don't need to be old to die nowadays. You could drop like a stone any moment. But it's where you're going is the big question. Are you going to heaven? Are you going to hell? Friend, I'm pleading with you tonight, come to the blessed Savior. Tonight I plead with you. Come to him who alone can and must save. He's still saving. Thank God we've seen souls saved here over these last months. And tonight you can be saved. If you come and trust him, and he'll give you a life worth living. Father in heaven, we leave these eternal issues with thee, and we pray, Lord, you'll bless the remainder of this night. But Lord, I pray, grip the meeting, grip the heart of those that are outside of Christ tonight, and draw them to thyself. I plead and I pray in our Saviour's name we ask it. Amen.